Hello friends, welcome, welcome to my YouTube channel. And today we are going to look at how to install fire dampers. That is a feasible link fire damper. There are two types of fire dampers. One is motorized or with actuator and second is feasible link. And most importantly, correctly, how do you install fire dampers, feasible link type correctly? And this is a very very important topic I feel because generally we don't treat, treat this important element in HVAC system very well. We just put it just to make compliance but in case of fire whether that works or doesn't work it's a big big question. I found myself the fire dampers are just installed maybe with the wire instead of feasible link and they are not installed correctly. So the whole purpose of fire damper that we must understand is to avoid spread of fire or smoke. To avoid spread of fire from one zone to another zone. That is very important and we must keep that in our mind that how we can avoid spreading fire from one zone to another zone. And that is the whole purpose of having fire damper not for making compliance. We can save a lot of lives with correct damper and that as engineer must have back of the mind that we are putting it to save many lives in case of any fire incident. So let's look at how it is. So this is one slide that will clear all doubts about how do we install fire dampers. So when we have two zones that is generally separated by a wall and these are walls and these need to be a fire rated walls. You can't have fire damper on non fire rated walls which will collapse in, in, in case of fire. Fire damper cannot do anything. The fire will come from here to here anyways. The first important thing is we must know which are the fire rated walls. So if this is a fire rated wall, the fire damper has to be inside or along this wall. It should act as a wall in case of fire. In case of fire over here, this should become a perfect wall that will avoid fire coming from this zone to this zone. It's very clear. Now all these fire dampers, these are feasible link fire dampers. So this is the head of the fire dampers. There are two types of heads. Either you take the entire assembly inside the fire dampers, you need to check the duct size because that will impact your velocities or you can keep the head out of the fire dampers. Now these fire dampers are supplied with these sleeves. You can see over here the fire damper is here, the sleeve is here and this is the feasible link over here. Now these sleeves have to be connected to a duct. Now how do we connect? Do we have a flange joint? Do we have very very strong joint to connect the ducts? And that's no. We should have the breakaway joints. The important thing is to know that we should have either slip joint or the weak joint over here. What? Why weak joint over here? You can see over here. This is a breakaway or slip joint. Why? Because we want the fire damper to remain intact in case of fire. If this assembly is, is joined very very tightly, it may happen that this duct will take the fire damper also out along with it. So we need this to be as weak as it could be without having any issues on leakages. So this is a breakaway joint where my duct will collapse, my fire damper will remain intact. So these joints, these joints have to be sleep joints. Now when we have a fire damper with feasible link, there are chances that feasible link might damage or may not work. In that case, the entire airflow might get, you know, affected. So I must have access door within the door as well as if there is a ceiling over here in that from there I can go inside and take care of this feasible link. That is another important point. The third important point is how do I get the sleeve and this wall you know jointed properly. So always there is a retaining angle which is sitting along with the wall this vertical part of retaining angle the horizontal part of retaining angle is riveted. This portion is not riveted. It acts like a, a stopper. So it is happening from all the four sides you can see over here. 
this is a retaining angle and this is how it has to be installed now as i said this is a connecting duct we also need to look at the airflow this particular gap the gap between the retaining angle and wall how do we treat so that has to be treated with the fire sealant so this is how the fire damper installation has to happen and this is the correct way of doing the fire damper installation i hope you got the value because it's a very important aspect because it can have huge impact on lives of the people right in case of fire so let's look at some of the so this is what i talked about an access door from the access door i can access the feasible link if there is an issue over here and this is the fire door which i just showed you in this this is a fire damper this is a reality this is a head and this is a curtain actually so it goes inside and becomes and this is a feasible link over here this is a sleeve the fire damper the inside is this has to be aligning with the firewall so this is very critical i thought i will add some value and you will get some value thank you very much for your patient listening please subscribe my channel follow me on youtube facebook linkedin ajaskazi.com please spread it to as many as you can because this is a valuable information thank you very much